going on, everybody? I'm on my way to Michigan, hoping to get out, get a deer, bring home some venison. So, I made it up here early this morning, late last night, I'll remember. And my camera doesn't like the cold. Amazing how much quicker the batteries go dead just from being cold. It is blowing. It's like I left a hurricane and came to a typhoon. A cold one. Temperatures are getting pretty chilly, which is good, but it, it is blowing 50 miles an hour, so it's good. We'll be back in Michigan during deer season. It's exciting. Can I get a quick video of your deer? We'll just tell everybody he shot it. That's beautiful, man. Wow. Wow, what do you think? Three and a half? I tried asking the DNR, he didn't know. He didn't. He tried crying out for Can I look in here? Go for it, yeah. He's younger. Well, I was thinking two and a half. Yeah, maybe, maybe even. Maybe a little longer. Yeah, I just. They don't usually make that long. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised. The oldest one I've ever got around here was six and a half. Really? Yep. He was almost 200 pounds, though. He was 198. Looks like he might have been rutting for a while. He's kind of nice size. Yeah. He'd probably go 160 pounds, I'm guessing. I'm Steve, by the way. Nice to meet you. So, he wanted you to shoot him, but he went the wrong way, huh? He went the wrong direction. I shot it with his gun, though. Well, that's almost as good. <laughs> Not really. Not really. That is so cool, man. Well, congratulations. Thanks. That's fun either way, isn't it? Yes, it is. Great job, guys. Congratulations. That's what we're looking for right there. This is my boy Gary right here. We're going to be out hunting the end of this field, tree line. I've been hunting this spot for 20 something years. Kind of don't know which way I'm. If I like the corn standing or I don't, they've cut a lot of the crops around here, so it's so windy they may not come out of there, or maybe they will, but don't know till you try. Shoot sure straight. So. All right, well I'll do the best I can in this wind. So I was loaded up with Remington copper solids, three inch. That's what I had sighted this gun in with. It's a Benelli Supernova. Rifle barrel, got the Nikon, slug hunter, some tactical mounts on there, BDC radical. That's what I got on a lot of my different guns, but I like them. Nikon makes a nice piece of glass.
day two. Probably could have taken a big doe last night, but just want to play it out. I don't want to shoot one when the big boy could be following him up. So still early in the trip. See how it goes. By the way, I know my footage all got corrupted, so I'm gonna have to back up a few pages. I was sitting on this end of the field. Gary, my friend, was sitting on the other end of the field. And uh, I heard bang, I thought it was him. I was like, yes, Gary got one. No, nope, it was somebody else on this property. And they went in over here, gutted it, dragged it out, which, so what? They're retrieving their deer. I have no problem. Then when I found the blood trail, how it went in there, and I followed it to where they shot it, and I found the plug of fur, I found everything, signs started right there where it hopped up in the air. I mean, I've been tracking deer for a long time. I know how to track deer. And they shot it on this property. That's a little different. But, you know, what are you gonna do? I could be a jerk and go raise heck. But sometimes, better just leave things alone. If I run across them, I can talk with them and have an understanding. But maybe they need the food too, you know. Maybe they sincerely need the food. A lot of people aren't working right now with COVID and everything. So who am I to judge? What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. The end of it all we only got to answer to one person or one god i should say the stand right here i set up years ago i had a double stand for when my boys were really little steven and brandon but gary saw a big one up there today big eight point sat here one evening one morning and this is my second evening and I've learned enough of just what I've seen in those day and a half whatever you want to call it that I could make a move but based on the wind and where they're moving I could skip set up again Concentrated trails where I'm getting 
mass amounts of deer moving through. Six shots. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe he's sighting his gun in because he missed the first two or three shots and now he's trying to see why his gun isn't zero. It's usually just buck fever. see it, this old fart got up like 35, 40 feet. I usually go up much higher. I used to go up higher than that branch right here, which is like 50 feet. Um, because I hung stuff on that. I'm in a clump. And a lot of you guys are probably, why is he not sitting on the seat? I never do. I put my climber so there's a tree in front of me. Why is he moving so much? Because I literally am covered up in tree trunks. It does two things. I sit here on my bar and the deer comes out. I can put my gun against the tree and have a steady rest. I can slide back, slide in. It allows me to be more accurate. Then I can dial my scope all the way up, get on the vitals when they're 100 yards away. And I can see, because I'm sucked right in, I, I can see if I'm getting any movement from the wind on the trees. And aim small, miss small, and put it right in there. Take a deep breath, find zero, and just let that gun surprise you. Just hold steady. A lot of inaccuracy comes from your heart. You get excited. Now this camera's acting up. The button isn't working. Just had a nice little buck walk right by me. Ten yards. This thing wouldn't power up. It wouldn't turn off. The red light was on, but nothing was working. I wasn't going to shoot him. He was a year and a half old buck. Six point, probably. But still, that's why I'm bringing these cameras with me, so I can record it. He was right at the, on the trail, walking right in front of my tree. So I got this camera back up with my last battery in it. But by the time I got the battery changed out, the deer was 60 yards away. I called him right in. I've seen probably 50 
15 to 20, probably 20 deer in this trip. And I don't know if I've got any of them on video. strategy this morning. I gotta take this thing off. I can't hear. Now my hearing is more important because I'm hunkered down right on the edge of the corn. I'm trying to get on some closer to some mean thoroughfares where they're either coming out of the corn to go into the woods or coming out of the woods to get into the corn. But I gotta be able to hear and everything's wet and it snowed a little bit this morning. That quiets things down so I may only have seconds Okay guys, this next clip, both cameras, the one in my head and the one that you see right here were corrupted. I got nothing of the camera on my head. And the footage that you have here was in fast motion with no audio, all corrupted. So this is all I could salvage. So let me give you the breakdown on what just happened. Buck of a lifetime. Comes walking down the trail towards the corn out of the woods. I see the deer coming. Turn the camera on, on my head. The deer comes up. I have him in my scope with no shot opportunity. He gets to 20 feet and my camera goes from 100% battery to 0% battery in all of 20 seconds. The camera then shuts down like you saw in the last other clip when the buck was underneath me. This buck is in my face, 20 feet. I got him in the scope. All he needs to do is take two more steps and the camera goes beep, 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 beep in his face. He spins around, takes off, gone out of my life. If the camera didn't malfunction, I would have shot him at 10 steps. The wind was blowing in my face. He was coming from the woods to the corn like we anticipated. Lost opportunity. So what you see here is me freaking out explaining how big the buck was, how I did everything right, put myself in the perfect situation, and now I missed the buck of a lifetime because of a malfunction that was out of my control. You know, I haven't shot a buck this big probably in 10 years, and that buck was 154 inches of tine length. So, missed opportunity. I show my frustration here. Although the clip is screwed up, you can probably tell the anguish I'm going through. I 
I'm just gonna show you guys kind of what's going on here. I was standing right here. The trail that this deer was on is right here. And it splits and it comes right through here. you guys well I promise I figure out the camera problem we get a couple deer on the ground and we do some cooking love you guys we're out <laughs>